Hello team, how's it going? Welcome back to a new video. Today we are looking at the US Army's new helmet. Is it a complete disaster? This is another brilliant video by Garen Fum. I'm looking forward to getting this one. The previous video I watched and reviewed and reacted to was absolutely brilliant. So as always, please check him out in the original video in the description. If you haven't seen him before, give him a like, share and a follow. But let's get into it. And as always, please comment below with what your thoughts are and what you want to see next. Um, we're going to be talking about a very interesting topic. Right here, we have the old helmet, the ECH, which was an excellent combat helmet. Right here, we have the Army's new combat helmet, the IHIPS. Uh, there's been a lot of talk. The IHIPS is a lighter helmet. The IHIPS also is a ballistically improved helmet from the ECH. Now, the ECH was a really good helmet. A lot of good saves in theater. The IHIPS is a little bit more untested, so we're gonna do what we do best here on Grand Thumb, and we're gonna test the helmet. Does it live up to the Army's claims? Micah. Uh, probably not. What if it performs just as well as Russia's helmet? Today on Grand Thumb, are we gonna be sad? Interesting, let's go. But before we get into it, we have to thank who, Micah? Uh, Sonoran Desert Institute. Because they are so awesome. They have sponsored the channel for a long time now. And if you're looking to get your start in gunsmithing, they are the people to go to. We cannot thank them enough. Go and check them out. They are just, we, we love them. Yeah, even though we botched their name and I'm sure they've gotten a little angry about that, we just love them. And next up, of course, we have our favorite optic manufacturer, Primary Arms. A big thank you to Primary Arms. They have provided optics they have been hooking us up and they sponsor the channel so we cannot thank them enough and they today today uh it is the uh, nerds rope and uh you think their customer service hates us they really actually we did have a call with them they're very they're not happy and of course unlike the camera this is filmed on the tv that you're watching this on the cars that well, unless you have american made car aac ammunition is made in the us of a we have to thank them for sponsoring the ammo they absolutely rock Let's get into it. So when it comes to the IHIPS, a couple improvements have been made. So we'll talk about those very quickly. With the older ECH, um, there was a lot of complaints about comms compatibility. It is definitely doable. You can wear your pelters under there. It just requires some reconfiguration of your helmet. With the new IHIPS, there is a mount specific from Pelter that allows your pelters to sit under. Um, again, so. they're trying to keep more kind of head protection compared to like the higher cut helmets like we're seeing, like that I'm wearing right here from uh, Opscore. And then in addition to that, there's less bolts through the actual helmet itself. The main bolt that you have is for the NVG mount. Now we compare that to the ECH right here, and you can see we have multiple bolts for the harness system that is on the helmet as well as for the NVG bracket. And that also goes for the OptiCore helmets as well. The idea being that the less holes that you have through the material, the less compromised it is going to be. Um, other helmets have taken this approach before, such as the Safariland Delta X and others. Uh, I'm very interested to see how this particular helmet performs. Um, it's 5% lighter while offering the same or better protection. Most of the protection from the eye hips comes from blunt force trauma. That's stuff that we really can't measure on this channel. We don't have the equipment for it, but it's supposed to have slightly better ballistic protection. Honestly, I would be happy if it just had the same ballistic protection because the ECH was a wonderful combat helmet. Both these helmets are made by Ceridine. Always has been. You put up the meme. It's all Ceridine? Always has been. So, uh, talk is cheap though. Ammunition is super, actually sponsored by AAC. So, let's get into it. Let's start shooting these helmets and let's see how they do. So, how are so what it does remind me of, so if you just go back to them. Um, cheap though, ammunition. So, they were very similar to the sort of British helmets. Um, so the they look the older one looks like sort of like the Mega. You got both of them there. So that looks very similar to sort of the Mark Six, VI, Mark Seven. Um, very plain, just ballistic helmet with multiple bolts through to hold. And then the sort of newer helmet is sort of like the Vertis helmet. They've still sort of tried to keep the protection, but you've got the mounted uh, NVG mount already attached to the helmet, just like the new Vertis helmet. And then you just attach the weight to the back and then that helps balance it out um, so you don't have to get your NVG mount and attach it to your helmet. That's already on there. 
They also on the vert is compared to the Mark 7 I found slightly more open and wider around the ears. You could fit powder ear defense a lot more easily with the Mark 6 and the Mark 7 and the Mark 6 Alpha. You know, you really had to play around with your chin straps sort of to get your powder ear defense on just because it was too tight. Because, if, you know, when they were made, you sort of just had the old foam ear defense to put them in. So very similar. We've seen this with a lot of kit, US and UK work very similarly. Get the same sort of kit nowadays, but from different companies. The NDG was a... Um, let's go back to... So here how we're going to be doing this is each helmet is going to be taking the same round at hopefully roughly the same place i'm am i a good shot micah you're good enough good enough so i'll try to do my best understand that the eye hips is of course going to have uh, has a little bit more hardware on it that hardware obviously is going to do more to stop some rounds it's not a perfect test but it's pretty good i'm going to do my best to hit the ballistic portions of the helmet we're going to start with 22. this is a very easy caliber that should be stopped by pretty much every helmet with the exception of the air, airsoft helmet we're going to go ahead and we're going to send it well, let's go check it out good ricocheted off there it looks like it's done a little bit more damage but did both okay, ricochet so off we have taken the shots to the 22. we're going to go ahead and set that to the side we will take a look and see what kind of back face deformation we have when a round impacts you obviously want to stop the round but if the helmet caves in into your brain, you're still dead. So you don't want to have any back base deformation. Uh, with the 22, I expected zero. We got zero on the eye hips. We pull this cover up right here. Yeah. So this is more of an oblique angle than we saw at the ECH. But as you can see, the round just skipped right off. That is by design. On the ECH, we actually had a little bit more deformation than the eye hips. It's very interesting. So you can oh. see right there. That's interesting from a 2-2. Yeah, that's very interesting. Um, I've seen a lot of testing that has seemed to show that the um, ECH uh, would be performing better. That might not be the case. Very interesting. Let's, uh, let's step it up, 9mm. Okay, uh, next up we have the Sandhawk. It's a 9mm. Uh, it looks fancy, but a 9mm is a 9mm, as long as you have the same barrel length. So we're not getting any crazy velocity. This is military 124. Very common to be encountered in a battlefield. Uh, we'll see how it does. I'm very surprised right now the eye hips did so good on the on the 22. Uh, Just about to say that nine mil very common on on the battlefield. You're going to see this sort of ammunition um, being fired you quite regularly, and you're more likely to carry it. We use the Glock in the UK as a very um, popular weapon um, when it comes to pistols. So yeah, very good test because it's going to be very common, um, that it's, and it's likely you will encounter this. Oh, he's a decent shot, isn't he? Yeah, look. Oh, that looks like it's done some damage to that one. So first off, we have the ECH. We have a hit right above the rail there. At first, a little bit alarming, just a straight hole into there. However, it completely stopped it. So we have some back face deformation right here. Uh, the question is, how does this uh, compare to the ECH? So it definitely stopped the round. It's definitely going to uh, hurt your head, though, isn't it? For sure. All right, so we have the impact on the ECH, very similar entrance, very similar back face deformation. Um, it's too close to call, in my opinion. It, they seem very, yeah. very similar. Uh, it should be noted too that this ECH is a size small. That being said, there's no difference in the ballistic protection that they're both going to offer uh, other than weight. So yeah, very interesting. Uh, it would seem to be so far that they are performing the same while the I hips is a lighter design so very very good so far uh, next up what we're gonna be doing is a 44 Magnum um, that's very common because 44 Magnum is used in NIJ testing okay we have a 44 Magnum right here this is a Korth revolver which sounds like I'm saying coarse but I'm Mike Tyson oh that's gonna hurt the heads Ah, you ain't surviving that. Yeah, look. So we have the 44 Magnum hit right here on the eye hips. And if we roll it over, now we do have back face deformation from the 9mm as well. Pretty significant. Uh, that would present a problem on the human skull. 
this is pretty consistent with combat helmets and how they perform in that they're they can stop larger calibers but at further distances at oblique angles uh, this would obviously be a save you'd be in the hospital for a while and uh how would how would how would uh how would charlie say it i don't know what he says he says a lot of things he says something about uh like potato headed i can't remember what he said something about russians oh they have um it, uh, Russians have the stupid little square heads with the small eyes. <laughs> um, ECH, I hit lower, which uh, presented a problem. The closer you get to the edge, uh, as you can see here, it just pretty much pushed it out and then was able to slip through. So we are going to redo that shot. Um, I'm thinking that the ECH is likely going to perform as good. Um, unfortunate. I, I wasn't good enough, Micah. He's a vegetable now. You know, just shows you know, that the you know, these helmets do give you protection. The wheelchair. You know, that's why it's essential that you do wear your helmets. It is really essential. Oh, that is caved right in. He's hit it slightly higher. Back face there. deformation, which is very comparable to the eye hips. This being a little bit less due to the fact that we already did have some back face deformation with the nine millimeter round on the eye hips. But so far, they are performing roughly the same right now. Um, I'm pleasantly surprised that. Uh, you know, so far a pretty good helmet. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna step it up to rifle rounds. Uh, helmets aren't specifically rated for rifle. There are a few, but they're not rated for like any type of normal round. Usually it's like a lead core type round. Helmets do have a lot of saves on rifle rounds, but it's typically from oblique angles or from very far away. Yeah. Next up, we have the AKM, the most common rifle in the world. Uh, if you're going to encounter any rifle, a very high likelihood that it will be an AKM you can see how close he's firing this from though. Straight through that, wasn't it? Still though, it's going to take, you know, a blast from a direct hit. Which is what you definitely don't want. But, yeah, it's going to hurt. And it is still going through. Look at that. So we'll talk about the ECH first. These helmets are getting shot a lot. So we have certainly uh, compromised some in touch, uh, structural integrity. But you can see it bulged out. The round was not caught, exited into the brain. And uh, yeah, that's a close range rifle shot. At longer range, it's going to perform better and will likely catch or deflect the round. But at close range, it's not really a whole lot you can do to stop yourself from getting killed by a, a rifle round through your helmet. And a lot of time, of, uh, we've got to remember, like you said, it's going to be from longer range or you're going to get a ricochet sort of come in at a bleak angle. Kind of, yeah. um, also, so more than likely that back face deformation is also lethal as well. Right here, we have the eye hips. We have the entrance right here. We do have no exit. It did catch did the it round. It? Um, it did perform better than the ECH. Uh, that being said, the amount of um deformation that we do see is enough to be lethal however it did stop the round so i would say overall that that indicates that the performance at longer range is going to be uh some amount better than the ech which is quite uh, surprising because again ech is a really good helmet has been used for a very long time so that is uh very surprising i did not expect that at all i'm in like baffled like i'm baffled yeah, I am. I am it's very. It's performing I'm very, very well. I, think. I really want to try a longer shot with with the on the on the eye hips. The ECH, we can try a longer shot on, but I really want to see the performance of a rifle round at long at longer range. So we are at 300 right here. The 300 is a bit of a difficult shot, however, it could certainly occur. So we're going to see how the helmet will perform. And this is going to be 5.56 out of a 12.5, pretty good velocity. Uh, this is an LMT spec war. I think it's going to do well. I think it's going to do pretty well. Minimal defamation. Oh, has he just missed it? Got it. Yes. And difference in the UK, we always have our chin straps done up. US, I know so you have them off, so the helmet does five, five, fly six. off. So you're going to have a lot of different results depending on what you're using. I think if we had used MA55 
MA-55 Alpha-1, a lot of the typical rounds that are used in war, which is the SS-109 projectile. It's that 62 grain projectile with that steel insert for extreme. This guy knows his shit, doesn't he? You can say it, Mike. A penetration. Really does. Penetration, there you go. With different rounds, you're not going to have as good, so we're using rounds of less penetration here. But on the ECH, you can see we had that nice little hole right there. And then it caught it uh, with not too much deformation. Again, I believe this would have been way worse had we used a round with a penetrator of any type. And then we had roughly the same result with the um, eye hips. The difference being with the eye hips, it's a little bit harder to tell since you'd already had deformation there. Point I think you would have actually been all right at that. Saves on rifle rounds at longer Which is ranges. decent. Um, it's pretty typical of, um, by the way, the blood on these helmets uh, is from the blood from the, <laughs> from the ECH from earlier. But there are multiple cases of rounds traveling into helmets and traveling through the air mid, through whatever that. material it is, and then exiting it out. So where they actually don't make contact with the person's brain, they just travel through the uh, ballistic material. Uh, it's very odd, but there are a lot of hit, uh, saves when it comes to these helmets. So we mostly have the backs mostly intact. So I definitely want to try out shotguns and uh, for good measure in SVD, um, just at close range, just uh, just to finish it off, why not? You know. Next up, we have- Do you know what would have been good, which I know it's hard and he can't, um, always, if he could have had like multiple helmets of, of, of each helmet, so he had a few, about three of each, so they weren't compromised as much, which would have been really good, but I know how hard it is to get your hands on these helmets. Um, so fair play to him for doing that, but it would have been good if he was able to, um, to make multiple shots at different helmets so they weren't as compromised, but you still get to see that it is catching a lot of the rounds, which is, which is really good to see for our soldiers. With the US flight soldiers. control, a pretty commonly used uh, 12 gauge round, and uh, we'll see how it performs. You guys ready? Ouch. So we have the eye hips. Um, we had almost all nine pellets enter the uh, back of the helmet right there. They were caught by the material, however, no way. that is a potentially lethal back face deformation. Especially to the back of the uh, head. Getting hit with buckshot, bad day. Point of all this is uh, don't, uh, don't get into a gunfight with Marines because they tend to have those M1014s. Yeah, pull. <laughs> I think I missed that. <laughs> <laughs> Bit of clay pigeon right. chewing. Right yeah, I'm throwing it this way. Nice. Decent shots, these guys, isn't they? All right, we have an SVD. It is a clone, but it is made in Ismatch factory. Basically an SVD, a little bit shorter of a barrel. This is a very bad case scenario, which is taking an SVD round. F thought we'd finish it with something fun. You ready? Yep. Yeah, it's just demolishing it. So I don't know. Predictably, uh, a FMJ 7.62 by 5.4R is going to uh, go straight through a helmet. So we've done a lot of shooting. Let's go ahead and let's wrap this up. Let's talk about the performance overall. So we've done a lot of testing. How did it perform? The ECH performed very well. Uh, it's about what we expected to see. The ECH is a well-proven combat helmet and uh, you know, like the results that we saw with it. I was, uh, I had a lot of questions about the eye hips, uh, specifically because I've seen Oxide's video where it really didn't perform all that well. Um, I think this can be chalked up to a couple things. Uh, one, types of rounds used and then two generation of helmet used. So, but overall, um, I think it should be noted that the eye hips performed very well. Uh, I'm very pleased with the types of performance that I'm seeing from it. And especially given the claim of blunt force trauma that it does better with that, I'm, I'm very much so inclined to believe that this is a definite improvement over the ECH. I'm, I, I have no dog in the fight. I'm not a guy to, to shill for the US government at all. But um, I do believe in this case that we do have a better helmet that is lighter that is providing more capability. So I have to say that the eye hips in my mind is a clear winner. Micah? Uh, yeah, especially with some of the stuff we saw going for it. I was a little bummed out, but uh, it's a good helmet. It's a good helmet. It's a good solid combat helmet. Um, we'll see how long it stays in service and, uh, and what conflicts it uh, participates. But yep, we have the eye hips and that kind of brings us down to the end. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, there are a lot of good helmets out there. Um, what we're always going to say on this channel when it comes to ballistic helmets is use good, reputable companies. Uh, Ceridine, with their eye hips, with their ECH, are great helmets. Um, you can get ECH helmets for really not that expensive. If you want to spend a little bit more money, you do have Opscore, you have Team Wendy, um, both of which make very good high cut helmets where it's easier to get those comms on there. However, you do lose a little bit of protection. 
However, with the op scores, you also have better at the back of the head protection. So there's always some trade-off somewhere in the yeah. shell design. Find the helmet that's going to work for you, but most importantly, buy it from a reputable manufacturer. Uh, we right. do not recommend Chinese-made helmets just due to um, quality control issues. If you're gonna trust your life to something, spend and a bit money, more money yeah. to save yourself. That goes for armor as well. Um, guys, as always, all this is cool, but get training. You can have the coolest helmet in the world, but if you have not gone out and for a day trained with your boys and had a good time and gone into the mountains and seen how you uh, react when you're wearing a helmet for months on end, when you're sweating in it, then it doesn't matter. Get training, tons of great places to get training from. Vet them, get out there, hang with the boys. That is always a good time. And as always, we have nothing else for you. Final thing for you guys, I'm gonna say it again because this comes right down to helmets that is fitness. You need to be fit. If you truly believe in the Second Amendment and you know what it's for, which is resisting a tyrannical government, you need to have some order of fitness because if you're not fit, you're going to die. Too right. I can't. <laughs> Absolute brilliant video again. Uh, the, the, this guy knows his stuff when it comes to weapons, ammunition, helmets, kit and equipment. Uh, I thoroughly enjoyed that and it's really good to see because like I said, I saw very um, big similarities between the old Mark 7 and the new Virtus for the UK helmet. It would be brilliant if you could do a video on them too to see how they hold up and how they perform. Um, but it's great to see that the new helmet is just the same, if not slightly better, with the 5% lighter weights. Because trust me, when you've got all your kit on you and you're operating in either really cold environments or really hot environments and you've got your helmet on constantly, because as you can see there, you need it on. It provides protection. So when you've got it on constantly, it can become irritable. It can become heavy, especially if you're laying down in the prone, okay, for a very long time, say, and carrying out an ambush and you're looking out you know, the helmet can become really, really, put a bit of strain on your neck, become quite annoying. So if you've got a nice fit, light, comfortable helmet, but offers the same protection, then it's really going to make a difference to your life um, on operations and even exercise. So really great to see that they've made it lighter and they have sort of slightly strengthened it. And with the sort of NVG mount as well, that's got, you know, that's mounted into the helmet, that actually makes a huge difference as well. You know, it's, it's, all the small differences make your life a lot easier when on ops. So, yeah, be really good if you can get the Virtus and the Mark 7. I'd be absolutely love that video, um, but thoroughly enjoyed this video. And it's great to know that the US soldiers are protected. They're getting better kit and equipment right, to go out on these exercises and ops. So thank you for the video. Thoroughly enjoyed it. As always, please check out his original video in the description. Please go and give him a like, share and a follow. Um, but what's your thoughts on it? Um, I think... Well done to the US. You know, you hear a lot of bad news coming out from them, coming out from the UK, but some of it is working. They are trying to improve and they are trying to make it better. But you can just see some of them that's going to hurt. Um, the defamation on the inside of the helmet. OK, you may survive, but you could walk away with some sort of brain damage or at least some sort of serious head injury. Um, but it's better than obviously being fatal, isn't it? So, but always wear your helmet when on ops because it does provide protection thanks for watching